Morning and welcome to the second Sunday in Lent. And I invite you to stand up and sing the God of Abraham praise.
Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. God's mercy endures forever. Since we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us with confidence draw near to the throne of grace, that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. And now let us confess our sin against God and our neighbor, first in silence and then together. Let us pray. Have mercy upon us, most merciful God. In your compassion, forgive us our sin, known and unknown, things done and things left undone. And so uphold us by your spirit that we may live and serve you in newness of life to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Holy God, loving friend, whose glory exceeds our understanding, you have asked us to seek your face, so we are here to do that. Keep us eager in the things of Christ. May we learn the ways of loving discipline without anxiety or reluctance, rejoicing in small victories and rising up from defeats, with the confidence of those who know they have a sure Savior. Because of your invitation, we worship you without fear. We praise you with thankful lips, and we adore you with loving hearts. Through Jesus Christ, your Son and our brother. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the reading of the lessons. A reading from the book of Genesis. The word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield. Your reward shall be very great. But Abram said, O Lord God, what will you give me? For I continue childless, and the heir of my house is Eliezer of Damascus. And Abram said, You have given me no offspring, and so a slave born in my house is to be my heir. But the word of the Lord came to him, This man shall not be your heir. No one but your very own issue shall be your heir. He brought him outside and said, Look toward heaven and count the stars, 
if you are able to count them. Then he said to him, So shall your descendants be. And he believed the Lord, and the Lord reckoned it to him as righteousness. Then he said to him, I am the Lord who brought you from Ur of the Chaldeans to give you this land to possess. But Abram said, O Lord God, how am I to know that I shall possess it? The Lord said to him, Bring me a heifer three years old, a female goat three years old, a ram three years old, a turtle dove, and a young pigeon. Abram brought him all these and cut them in two, laying each half over against the other, but he did not cut the birds in two. And when birds of prey came down on the carcasses, Abram drove them away. As the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell upon Abram, and a deep and dark and terrifying darkness descended upon him. When the sun had gone down and it was dark, a smoking firepot and a flaming torch passed between these pieces. On that day, the Lord made a covenant with Abram, saying, To your descendants I give this land, from the river of Egypt to the great river, the river Euphrates. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. and my salvation whom then shall I fear the Lord is the strength of my life of whom then shall I be afraid when evildoers came upon me to eat up my flesh it was they my foes and my adversaries who stumbled and fell should encamp against me, yet my heart shall not be afraid, and though war should rise up against me, yet will I put my trust in God. One thing have I asked of you, Lord, one thing I see. That I may dwell in your house all the days of my life. To behold your fair beauty and to seek you in your temple. For in the day of trouble you shall keep me safe in your shelter. You shall hide me in the secret of your dwelling and set me high upon a rock. Even now you lift up my head above my enemies round about me. Therefore I will offer in your dwelling an oblation with sounds of great gladness. I will sing and make music to you. Hearken to my voice, O Lord, when I call. Have mercy on me and answer me. You speak in my heart and say, Seek my face. Your face, Lord, will I seek. Hide not your face from me, nor turn away your servant in displeasure. You have been my helper 
cast me not away. Do not forsake me, O God of my salvation. Though my father and my mother forsake me, the Lord will sustain me. Show me your way, O Lord. Lead me on a level path because of my enemies. Deliver me not into the hand of my adversaries. For false witnesses have risen up against me and also those who speak malice. What if I had not believed that I should see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living? Oh, tarry and await the Lord's pleasure. Be strong, and God shall comfort your heart. Wait patiently for the Lord. A reading from the letter to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, join in imitating me and observe those who live according to the example you have in us. For many live as enemies of the cross of Christ. I have often told you of them, and now I tell you even with tears. Their end is destruction, their God is the belly, and their glory is in their shame. Their minds are set on earthly things, but our citizenship is in heaven, and it is from there that we are expecting a savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. He will transform the body of our humiliation that it may be conformed to the body of his glory by the power that also enables him to make all things subject to himself. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, whom I love and long for, my crown, my joy and crown, stand firm in the Lord in this way, my beloved. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thank you. Thank you. So 
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Some Pharisees came and said to Jesus, Get away from here, for Herod wants to kill you. He said to them, Go and tell that fox for me. Listen, I'm casting out demons and performing cures today and tomorrow, and on the third day I finish my work. Yet today, tomorrow, and the next day, I must be on my way because it is impossible for a prophet to be killed outside of Jerusalem. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to it. How often have I desired to gather your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, and you were not willing. See, your house is left to you. And I tell you, you will not see me until the time comes when you say, Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. And now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts move us to that place where we can face our fear and have courage and generosity and boldness. O oh God, the one who created us and the one who saves us. Amen. Please be seated. What do we do with our fear? The Bible keeps saying, don't be afraid. But it usually says that to somebody who is already afraid and has very good reason to be afraid. God told Abraham not to be afraid to die without leaving an heir. His age made that a reasonable fear. The psalmist gave many reasons to be afraid. Evildoers eating his flesh, the threat of war. The Philippians feared being judged for their association with other Christians who did shameful things. And the Pharisees told Jesus he should fear Herod. We're all afraid of something. The question is, what do you do with your fear? Those same scriptures I just cited shed light on that question as they offer images of faith and courage, of patience and promises, of vision and mission. And it's hard to miss the parallels to what's going on in Ukraine when the psalmist writes, though an army should encamp against me, yet my heart shall not be afraid. The war should rise up against me, yet will I put my trust in God. We are seeing this coming out of Ukraine, coming out of Poland. We saw this on Wednesday, especially when the Kyiv Classical Symphony Orchestra played a, a symphony at a concert on the main plaza of Kyiv under threat of bombs and of weapons at any moment. And we barely need our imagination to see President Zelensky as the hen facing the fox in this morning's gospel. It's like he's telling the world to send the president of Russia a message. Go and tell that fox for me. You may be more powerful than I am, but we Ukrainians will be doing the work of resisting and hoping until we finish our work. Their courage and fearlessness is inspiring the whole world. And Ukraine isn't the only hero in this story. I'm, I've been very touched by the people of Poland whose generosity and courage in, inspire equal respect. The United States has a cap for refugees from Europe of 10,000 per year. Poland, about 10% 10 10 the size of the US, has already received over a million Ukrainians. And one Ukrainian journalist described what she saw in a Polish border town at the rail station. Thousands of Ukrainians have escaped by train to this railway station. 
There they are met by an enormous banner in front of its entrance that reads in both Polish and Ukrainian, you are safe here. Dozens of Polish volunteers provide Ukrainian refugees with everything for free, as another sign says. Food, water, clothes, phones with prepaid plans, accommodations, legal advice, everything they would need. While I was there, she writes, the volunteers mingled among the crowds, helping displaced Ukrainians find food, hot beverages, and somewhere to sit. The bishops in Poland and Western Ukraine had admonished the faithful even before the war started. One bishop said, we're ready to welcome people in churches, provide them with food and water. We have organized first aid courses for priests, religious, and lay people to care for the injured if necessary. The spirit was necessary, the words were hardly necessary because the people took over and cared. Like the psalmist wrote, though war should rise up against me, I put my trust in God. Rabbi Abraham Heschel said that the role of the prophet is to cast out fear. Because when our hearts are afraid, we've forgotten the plot of the story. God is not only the author of all things, the God of Genesis, the mother of all creation, the beginning, the source. God is also the God of promise, of things that will be, of new creation, of the future, of tomorrow. Well, Jesus hadn't forgotten the plot of the story. The Pharisees tried to get him to act on his fears in a threatening situation. Herod's on the hunt, they said. But Jesus had neither the time nor the energy to expend on fear. Tell that fox I have no time for him right now. Today and tomorrow I'm busy clearing out the demons and healing the sick. The third day I'm wrapping things up. He's headed to Jerusalem where he would face a showdown with the powers of evil. Meanwhile, though, he's preaching, healing, eating with sinners, and proclaiming that the kingdom of God is at hand. Jesus knew that the greatest danger was not one that Herod would bring, but the danger of being diverted from his mission. The Ukrainians and the Polish people are helping us understand the image of Jesus as a hen that we read in Luke's gospel. And they're revealing important truths about God and about each other that we tend to overlook and deny. This image first became real for me when I was in Jerusalem learning Hebrew and traveling around Israel studying its geography. And one image that remains clearly in my mind is the view of Jerusalem from a small chapel across the Kidron Valley on the western slope of the Mount of Olives. It's called Dominus Flavit, the Lord wept. And it refers to this text where Jesus weeps over the city that had refused his ministrations. The altar is centered before a high arched window that looks over the city. And it has an iron grillwork that divides the view into sections as if it were a stained glass window, but it's not. It's a window. Its subject is alive. The city itself, with the dome of the rock at the bottom left corner and the Church of the Holy Sepulcher in the middle. And on the front of the altar is a picture of what never happened in that city. It's a medallion with a mosaic of a white hen with a golden halo around her head. Her wings are spread wide to shelter the pale yellow chicks that crowd around her feet. And she looks ready to spit fire if anyone comes near her babies. That never happened. And the picture doesn't pretend that it did. But that medallion is rimmed with red words in Latin of today's gospel. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills prophets and stones those who are sent to it. How often have I desired to gather your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings and you were not willing. You see, that's the way a hen loves. All she can do is open her arms. She can't make the chicks take cover there. 
is a posture of vulnerability, wings spread, breast exposed. A hen may nurture and protect, but her strength is no defense against a fox if the fox wants to attack. As one writer put it, Jesus won't be king of the jungle in this or any other story. What he will do is stand between the chicks and those who mean to do them harm. She has no fangs, no claws, no rippling muscles. All she has is her willingness to shield her babies with her own body. If the fox wants them, he will have to kill her first. Well, that's what happens in Jesus' story, and today it's happening in Ukraine. The fox slides up one night in the yard while all the babies are asleep, and when the cry of the hen wakens them, they scatter. She dies the next day, where both the fox and the chickens can see her with her wings spread and her breast exposed, without a single chick beneath those feathers. Friends, we must face the truth that there are foxes and there are chicks in this world. Chicks need to be protected against foxes, and yet there are no guarantees that they will be saved from the fox. Jesus laments that Jerusalem would not allow him to gather its children under his wings. Don't be deceived. It wasn't the children who refused. It was the rulers, like Herod, the fox. Herod and Jerusalem won that battle. They succeeded in killing Jesus, the hen. But they lost the war. Jesus' courage and Jesus' resurrection is still remembered, and it still brings strength. <coughs> while Herod is merely a footnote to the story. And so today, Russia and its president are likely to win the war in Ukraine, though the jury is still out on that. But have no doubt, the courage of President Zelensky and the Ukrainian people will be remembered and retold long after the current president of Russia, whose name I will not say, is gone and forgotten. So how do you want to be remembered? How will we respond even when the war is nine time zones away from us? I want to be more like the Ukrainians and the Polish. Defeat may come before victory, but hen-like love touches the soul of the whole world and becomes a force and energy that contributes to the eventual victory. You may remember the song that we sang at the end of last week's service. Love will be our Lenten calling, waking every closed, cold spirit, stirring new life deep within till the quickened heart remembers what our Easter birth can mean. A good prayer on this Sunday of hens and foxes when Jesus refused to take up arms but protected and loved, inspired and exercised courage. That's what I want to do. I invite you to join me, Jesus, the Ukrainians, the Polish, others around the world in that way of facing our fears. Amen. Deepest night is clear.
It's not wrong to ask where you are, God, when innocent children go hungry or are displaced by adult wars. It's not wrong to question and doubt, to shake our fist and cry in grief and anger. What would be wrong would be to accept it as your will, to justify it, explain it, be unmoved by it, deny it. It would be equally wrong to use it as evidence that you don't exist or don't care, to leave our vulnerable ones at the mercy of our cynicism, our unbelief, our apathy. And so we come and we offer our worship through our tears. We praise you through our tears. We proclaim your justice and salvation through our tears. We believe that whenever there is suffering and injustice, your tears flow and your heart is broken. You cry in grief and shake in anger. And your mercy and compassion drive us to work for healing and justice through the pain and burden of our tears. You fill every tear with your nail-scarred presence and breathe into every gasp your comforting spirit. In every broken voice you called, inviting us to find you. Thank you for the grace that shouts to the pain of our world and that teaches us to listen for life in the sound of tears. Now we name specific people and situations whose tears especially touch us today. For Brian Samuel, continued healing prayers. Continue to pray for Carmini and for Dolores, Bill. We pray for Luisa, who will be leaving this Thursday from her house after 50 years and will be moving to San Bernardino. We pray for her and her family as they face this transition. And we pray for the people of Ukraine, especially the children, those who are staying to fight or to hide, and those who have left and exposing themselves to the compassion and care of the world. Pray, pray for the journalists who are trying to bring news to the people in Russia in this weather in the rest of We pray for all other places that are scarred by war and all other children in the world who are also suffering. Let us remember all of those who are victims of war and oppression in our world. Hope beyond all human hope. You promised descendants as numerous as the stars to old Abraham and barren Sarah. You promised light and salvation in the midst of darkness and despair and promised redemption to a world that will not listen. Gather us to yourself in tenderness. Open our ears to listen to your word. Open our hearts to bear the tears of those who weep. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also, and also with you. you. Peace be with you. Peace, David. Peace. Hey, Dol Dolores, hi. Hi. 
Hello. Hello, Rachel. Love it. Okay, thank you. Peace, Robert. Hey, Grant. God's peace, God's, Robert. Yeah. God's peace, Dolores. God's peace, Grant. God's peace, God's David. Peace, Frank. And peace, Frank. Hey. And God's peace Derek. in that empty room. <laughs> yes, sir. I don't know who that is. Sir Guy, I hope you're feeling better. Hey, Judith. Peace, Judith. Peace, Judith. Peace, Dolores. Peace, David. <laughs> Good to see you. So I invite you to be seated. Peace, Amanda, where you be. And Robert, peace to you. And I invite you to bring your offerings to God. The basket is on the table in the back of the room. And as we sing, O oh God, how we have wandered, let us prepare ourselves and this table to receive the gifts of God in communion. Amen. you to stand all who are able and to find the insert in your bulletins for the Eucharistic prayer.
God dwells in you. And also Come to the table with thankful hearts. We open our hearts to God and to one another. Let us give thanks to our God. It is right that God thanks and praise. It is truly right and a good and joyful thing to give you thanks, all holy God, source of life and fountain of mercy. You bid your faithful people to cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast that fervent in prayer and in works of mercy and renewed by your word and sacraments, they may come to the fullness of grace which you have prepared for those who love you. Therefore, joining with angels and archangels and with the faithful of every generation, we lift our voices with all creation as we sing. Holy, holy, holy Lord God, God of power Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed are you, gracious God creator of the universe and giver of life. You formed us in your image and called us to dwell in your infinite love. You gave the world into our care that we might be your faithful stewards and show forth bountiful grace. But we failed to honor your image in one another and in ourselves. We would not see your goodness in the world around us, and so we violated your creation, abused one another, and rejected your love. Yet you never ceased to care for us and prepared the way of salvation for all people. Through Abraham and Sarah, you called us into covenant with you. You delivered us from slavery. Then in the fullness of time, you sent your eternal word made mortal flesh in Jesus. Born into the human family and dwelling among us, he revealed your glory. Giving himself freely to death on the cross, he triumphed over evil, opening the way of freedom and life. On the night before he died for us, our Savior, Jesus Christ, took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. As supper was ending, Jesus took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Take, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for all, for the forgiveness of sin. As often as you shall drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Remembering his death and resurrection, we now present to you from your creation this bread and this wine. By your Holy Spirit, may they be for us the body and blood of our Savior, Jesus Christ. And grant that we who share these gifts may be filled with the Holy Spirit and live as Christ's body in the world. Bring us into the everlasting heritage of your daughters and sons, that with all your saints, past, present, and yet to come, we may praise your name forever through Christ and with Christ and in Christ. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, to you be honor, praise, and glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we pray. Our Father, Father in heaven, hallowed, hallowed be your name. name. Your, your kingdom, kingdom come, come. Your, your will be done, done on earth as in heaven. heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. 
for the, the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the, and the glory, glory are yours, now, now and, and forever. forever. Amen. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. We, we who, who are, are many, many are, are one body, body, for we, we all share in the one bread. bread. Friends, these are the gifts of God for the people of God. And this is the banquet of the Lamb for those who love him and those who want to love him more. So come, you have much faith and you who have little. You have been here often and you who have not been here long. You have tried to follow and you who have failed. Come, because it is God who invites you and it is the Lamb's will that you should meet God here. And so you are invited to come, form an aisle in the center, to form a line in the center aisle, to receive these gifts of grace, not of merit, nothing that we can deserve, only receive it by grace. And so all are invited for that very reason.
invite you to stand, all who are able. And let us pray together. God of abundance, you have fed us with the bread of life and cup of salvation. You have united us with Christ and one another. And you have made us one with all your people in heaven and on earth. Now send us forth in the power of your spirit that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. Please be seated. Welcome all to <laughs> this second Sunday in Lent. And we have a number of things that are that we can do out of this worship service. But first I want to see if anybody's celebrating a birthday. We had a few birthdays in the Spanish service. Anybody having a birthday last week, this week, today, this weekend? Okay. Anybody on online? No? <laughs> okay. Um, so I emailed you yesterday about the collection for Ukraine um, and there is a space over there and I know it was a short turnaround um, and I learned from Amanda who is the one who has been in contact with the Ukrainian church in Hollywood um, and by the way I know there is one in in uh, Echo Park it's the same priest who serves both communities and they are doing the gathering at Hollywood so that is why we're we're working with them there um, but they have access to uh, military planes that are taking these things over uh, to Poland uh, and, and being made available to people. And they're making number of flights. So it's not just like we have to get it done by one time and do it. This will be continuing to be sent. So um, we are going to keep this open. And if you uh, can bring things either during the week or uh, next Sunday, um, and I left, or, or I included in the email, the list of things that they specifically need. Um, but I'm sure some other things that make sense uh, can be included in that. So that is a way that we can be concretely responding to what's going on in Ukraine. Um, also, I want to introduce Matthew Holm. Uh, Matthew is an organizer with Clue. And uh, he is working specifically on a campaign for hotel workers. Uh, that has been um, part of the campaign almost as long as I've been a part of it for some 25 years. Um, and so this, they have two petitions that are going on right now. And uh, Matthew is gonna help us uh, during the, the coffee hour. Uh, there are two petitions. He can explain them to you, and uh, it would be great to have all of us sign. If some of you are able to take a packet and uh, take, get signatures from neighbors, from coworkers, from wherever you happen to be during the week, and bring them back next week, that would be great as well. So um, those are things that ways that we can respond concretely. And um, now I want to invite Rachel to say a word of invitation. Yes, um, I am. I'm uh, singing in a opera right now. Um, it's going to be at the Ar Oh, hi. <laughs> I'm singing in an opera right now. Uh, it's going to be at the Aratani Theater um, downtown. Um, it's called Ilanta. Um, it is a Tchaikovsky opera, which you know, doing a Russian opera right now might not be the best thing, but it's the the, the lead soprano it's about a blind princess and the lead soprano is blind herself and we're partnering with several organizations for the blind um, as well so it's raising awareness and many of uh, and the, some of the programs are going to have uh, be in braille um, for those that are um, hard of seeing to uh, be able to follow along and everything so uh, it's, it's absolutely beautiful and I you know would love to see there and that concert that the uh, Ukrainian Symphony Orchestra played on Wednesday played Tchaikovsky too, so apparently it's okay. <laughs> um, now I want to invite Gertie, who is going to uh, update us on the transition. Good morning. I think we probably have more things that we don't know than things we know, but I'm going to bring you up to date on what we do know. 
And the first item is the good news that the diocese has moved us to work with the, trans, um, the transition and um, deployment office um, w with Tom Discavage, who is in charge of that. It used to be uh, Joanna Satorius. Um, and that means that they're, gonna, they're treating us like any parish that is having a transition. And um, we will be working with them to identify what is best for us, who is best for us, they'll be uh, guiding us through that process. Um, we are scheduled, well, we don't have a schedule yet, but we're have, going to have another meeting with Tom soon uh, to talk about next steps. But the important thing that he stressed with us is that it's normal to have the serious discernment work of tr transition begin after the person who is currently in the position leaves. So the other thing that we will definitely engage with him about is what we will do in the Sundays immediately after Frank retires. But the one thing I can promise you is that there will be worship on Sundays um, after Frank leaves. So um, that's what we know. We think it's a good thing. Um, we ask your prayers as we go forward. And um, I promise you that as we know things, we will keep you informed. And I also invite you, if you've got any questions or concerns, to ask me or anyone who is on the uh, Bishop's Committee those questions so that they can bring them up when we meet. Um, if you have questions about who those people are, ask me. Thank you. And Eric is here, so he's certainly one of them, and a great addition to the committee. Marissa was online. I'm not sure she still is, but um, she's the other English-speaking um, person on the, on the committee. So I invite you to stand now. And let us bow before the presence of God. Grant, Almighty God, that your people might recognize their weakness and put their trust in your strength so that they might always rejoice in the protection of your loving providence. Through Christ our Lord. Amen.
go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Thank you, Frank. Please. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Oh, who Bye. Bye. Bye, Bye, Bye Nana. Bye, Amanda. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Bye, Bye, David. David. <laughs> nice to see you, David. Nice to see you, Albert. And you as well, Amanda. Amanda. Okay. <laughs> see you again. Okay. See you again soon.